this is the latest update on Yellowstone quake swarms and geyser activity update by the USGS. They come out with their Caldera Chronicles and details. This is from their latest, the April 1st Chronicles update. USGS volcanoes for Yellowstone and Wyoming, of course. And here we have the monitors for the seismicity. We can see a few of them here. How they're, they're one point there. Okay, let's see. This is 2.7, 1.3, 9, uh, two, uh, 9. Sorry, that was uh, the magnitude was 3 at a 2.7 depth, 6 at a 1.3 depth, and you go on, uh, onward and upward 1.8 at 2.4, 1.8 at 3. This is all the same day, by the way, on the 28th of uh, March. So this is what we call an earthquake swarm. Pulling out, this is just west of the lake, Yellowstone Lake here. And uh, another one in, in the lake, earthquake swarm, 21st, 21st and 21st, and 22nd, 22nd. And this is the 28th, and this is another earthquake swarm. You can see there, from 26th to the uh, to the 30th. Another one there. They're all over the place. Let's pan out again. Okay, and they're also these are the ones that are reported. The one the the, the ones that are recorded a lot more than the ones that are reported. This is uh, just now the red ones today. Point 0.8, again, point 0.9 magnitude. Let's go out again. And this is the bigger picture. The bigger picture, okay. The seismicity data. Where are we? Sorry. Go back again. The deformation data. Deformation, Yellowstone National Park. Continuous recording, temporary deployments of GPS. Receivers and benchmarks on solid monuments employed at Yellowstone to precisely record their positions. The time variations over days, months, years, etc. Provide velocity in centimeters per year of the site relative to the rest of the points in Yellowstone. The velocity fields thus map spatial variations of the ground due to such volcanic processes as magma and hydrothermal transport and fault motions related to earthquakes. Measurements of ground monitored motions using GPS at Yellowstone provide a method of monitoring these active volcanic and tectonic processes that are necessary for understanding the properties and locations of the sources, as well as provide information on possible pre-monitory motions that precede a volcanic or an earthquake event. GPS stations are maintained by the Plate Boundary Observatory via UNAVCO. Now, we know that uh, they've told us before that the caldera is sinking, whereas the Norris Geyser Basin, where the Steamboat Geyser is found, is rising. Let's go deformation and swarm. That's an old amount. It's back down to January 2011. Okay. Water temperature data for Steamboat Geyser, Yellowstone. Steamboat temperature monitor equipment currently non-operational. New installments will be installed in the spring of 2019. Uh, the geyser is located at the eastern edge of Norris Back Basin. It rarely has major eruptions, but when they occur, they are powerful. In these events, columns of hot water reaches up to 300 feet. It's supposed to be the biggest geyser in the world, and as we know, about 60% of the worldwide geysers are found here in Yellowstone. 
Uh, so it goes up about 300 feet, followed by Russia's steam phase that can last for over a day, loudly discharging steam nearly 600 meters into the uh, 600 feet into the atmosphere. The water is neutral to alkaline and rich in chlorine. Small minor eruptions can occur every few minutes. The temperature is measured in the outlet cha channel downhill from the geyser's vent. Steamboat has proven more active during the 21st century than any time since the early 1980s. Between late 1981 and 2000, there were no large eruptions, but since May of 2000, Steamboat has had 10 significant eruptions, most recently on March 15, 2018. And since then, there's been over 40, I think over 10 to 12 this year alone. A rapid temperature increases in geyser outlet channels typically reflect increase in flow due to eruptions of the nearby thermal feature. And uh, going back to the monitoring, we saw that we had earthquake swarms, quite a number of them. And uh, going to the alerts, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory monthly update, April 1st. Recent work and news, there were four water eruptions of Steamboat Geyser March 2019. They were March 4th, 11th, 17th, and 25th. Discharge measured at the Tantalus stream gauge suggests that these eruptions were similar in size to those that occurred earlier in the current sequence, which started March 2018. Hopefully Steamboat will keep up the action so that more visitors can enjoy the spectacle during the, the summer of this year. And seismicity here, now during March 2019, the University of Utah seismograph stations, University of Utah is responsible for monitoring Yellowstone. They're responsible for the operation and analysis of the Yellowstone seismic network. They located 127 earthquakes in the Yellowstone Park region. The largest event was a minor earthquake of 3.3 magnitude, located 14 miles north-northwest of Pahaska TP, Wyoming, on March 4 at 10.16 a.m. The earthquake was not reported felt. March seismicity in Yellowstone included two swarms of earthquakes. The first swarm of 26 located events occurred 16 miles east-northeast of West Yellowstone, Montana, from March 25th to 26th, and ranged in magnitude from 0.1 to 1.9 magnitude, and a second smaller swarm of 17 local earthquakes occurred nine miles west of Old Faithful in Wyoming on March 28th, as we saw in the beginning of this video, magnitude from 0.1 to 2.0. Earthquake swarms like these are common and account for roughly 50% of the total seismicity in the Yellowstone region. Yellowstone earthquake activity remains at background levels. Now about the ground deformation, there were no significant changes in surface deformation in the Yellowstone area as recorded by GPS stations. Ground subsidence of Yellowstone caldera continues as it has since 2015 at a rate of a few millimeters per month, per month. In the, that's, that's quite a quite a, a large difference every single month. In the area of the Norris Geyser Basin, that's where we find the Steamboat Geyser, GPS data indicate no vertical deformation. That area has shown little net change since October 2018. It's been rising. This is what uh, we were told by uh, from other announcements. Uh, examples of GPS data can be found at the link here at UNAVCO. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, the YVO, provides long-term monitoring of the volcano and earthquake activity in Yellowstone National Park region. And Yellowstone is the site of the largest and most diverse collection of natural thermal features uh, in the world. Well, I thought it was 60%. It's, it's, a large, it's, it's got 60% of the geysers and thermal features. No, it's, a bit, it's the largest in the world. And the first national park, YVO, is one of the five USGS Volcano Observatories monitor volcanoes in the United States for science and public safety. And this is the, uh, they, have, they have the contact information. This is, of course, uh, supervised by Michael Poland, 
science is uh, in charge for USGS at Yellowstone. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.